Well, the University of Pretoria has now confirmed that the number of students there have tested positive for COVID-19 has increased to 100. The institution says its management believes that the virus has been contracted off campus at one of the pubs or restaurants that students frequent in the Hatfield area. We're joined now by Professor Ramniak Alavalia, the CEO of Higher Health. Professor Alavalia, good afternoon to you. I mean, when we have 100 people in one institution who've all contracted the virus, it really begins to look a little like a cluster of disease there. No, absolutely, Stephen. This is the worrying. Um, but we anticipated the numbers to grow higher. Um, as we reported 55 the day before yesterday, we knew it's going to be touching around 100, 100 plus, just sitting around 116 right now. Um, um, and, you know, when you have cluster outbreaks in congregate settings like residences in institutions of higher learning, TVET, CETs, universities, uh, when a group of young people through a super spreader event or through, uh, through a cluster where they, they acquire this infection, when they come back and they mingle with each other, they, they reside each other, with each other, they dine with each other, the virus spreads very, very quickly. And, and, and as we anticipated, more we will keep testing, more we will contact trace, more we will start finding the positive. In fact, I'm quite happy that we are finding the positive students very early at this stage because we want to break the chain of the cluster outbreak. And that's the only way we can do it. If we can catch the infections early and isolate and quarantine students very early so that the chain of the spread can be, can be, can be, can be um, closed off very quickly. So um, it is anticipated. We do anticipate a little bit growing further while we test and contact screen about 6,000 young students across the, the campuses who could be in possible contact with them. The worry is the community, the worry is the, the families, the Easter break uh, where students have gone back. Um, uh, you know, this was an orientation month. It's a tricky time for higher education, post-school system, where uh, young people are meeting with each other. They are making new friends. It's adulthood. And it's, it's, it's their life to, to party and to, to know each other, despite we put severe restrictions. Um, but um, unfortunately, as, as the global data, and you just were showing the data, the real data is showing that this, the new variants are highly showing affinity to young people. And young people uh, are super spreaders of the events, are carriers of, this, of, of the virus. So it's worrying. And, and it's important that we are on alert. And it's important that we, we monitor COVID-19 across post school system. Um, I mean, the obvious question, and I hate to be the one to break this up, I'm sure it will have been discussed uh, already, is does the University of Pretoria need to, need to take a more extreme measure? Does it need to try and put some students into isolation? Does it even need to postpone some classes or disrupt its sort of education timetable? And I realise, you know, that's not an easy thing to do, a difficult thing to do, and there can be other consequences that stem from it. I think entire globally, South Africa, us as post-school system, we need to realize that we need to now start living with this virus. And the reality is, as much as it's grim, the reality is this virus is bound to stay with us. Um, the only way we can eradicate it is through, through, through some kind of vaccination program, which can be absolutely able to vaccinate. But that's also not guaranteed because vaccines are not enough when we come to such kind of virus uh, or ch challenging such viruses. So in, in reality, um, when you talk about cluster outbreaks, this is not the first time it has happened with higher education. Since the first wave or the second wave, we've seen many outbreaks in many, many institutions. Now, the biggest issue here will always be is how our cluster investigation team, which is NICD, NHLS, local Department of Health, higher health, the institution, are able to test and screen and contact trace as many young people as possible who could be contact from one person to the other. And we have now kind of put facilities for isolation and quarantine for students who could do at home, but predominantly and mostly in our own facilities in the post-school system where we have through our residences and through local Department of Health found spaces where we can move young people very quickly who are turning to be positive or who are contacts waiting for the results, but are close contacts with each other. And you're talking about 6,000 people. And if you go into contact tracing with such big numbers, you're bound to miss few, you're bound to, um, uh, you're bound to ensure, you're bound to um, find uh, in more clusters being built from a similar cluster. 
So the question here is, um, is what do we do next from the 6th of April, that's from tomorrow. So most of the University of Pretoria, thank God, is running mostly remotely, so those classes will continue. But where we have residences and students in isolation, quarantine, we are taking extreme measures to not allow uh, more contacts to be coming in close contacts to the people we've already isolated. I suppose, Professor Alawali, I mean, one of the things is you don't want these people to travel, right? You actually need to keep them on campus. You need to keep them in one place. And because most of them are fairly young, that means that they're not really very vulnerable. They're unlikely to have a comorbidity. They're unlikely to have serious symptoms of the disease. can still happen, but it's a very small chance. The point that I'm really making is that you actually need to keep them in one place. You have more control of them now than you would if they went anywhere else. In fact, Stephen, I, I like to apologize to young people. You know, to be very honest, it's their life. You know, it, they're coming into, they work very hard to come into post-school system. They've, they've dreamt to be in University of Pretoria. They've dreamt to be in post-school system. They're now in TVET colleges and CET colleges. And I do name TV, TVETs and CETs because of their rural and informal settlements, which are very much into the communities as such. So um, I, I want to apologize, but th the reality is we put severe protocols, we put systems, we put controls. We're asking them to, to follow behavior because, as you rightfully said, they are, uh, they, they are, they have high affinity to the virus. They get infected. They're mostly mildly symptomatic or asymptomatic. But they are the carriers to the community in general, where their own family members, the reality of our of our ac academics, uh, the adults that are around them are extremely vulnerable to this virus. And uh, that's exactly if you recall, and I've been repeatedly saying that, you know, if I, rem I recall the, the post-metric rage parties that happened in Belito and others, which caused the whole when students came back and they mingled with the community and the families and gradually a month later we saw a massive second wave coming in and, and that's exactly how waves start is when the virus moves from one individual to the other finds enough good space to mutate starts transforming develops into variants that can escape antibodies that can uh, be more transmissible or more virulent and they, these are the challenges that we as humans need to accept that uh, that this virus is trying to survive within us and our aim is to also defeat this virus in the same time so uh, so young people's behavior is very sensitive they are the critical point if you look at the india right now the global data of india is showing or sorry the indian data is showing the biggest super spreader of the whole second wave is because of young people. Similarly, if you look at US, so, so South Africa is not different. And in and, and reality, young people's behavior is very, very sensitive to our future and our future ways. So I think um, monitoring such epidemics, monitoring such cluster outbreaks, quickly acting on it, trying to isolate um, uh, early cases and, and not letting the virus spread is the best win that we can win at this moment. I mean, it's, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of resources. Do you have the resources that you need? Do you need help from anyone else? The Department of Higher Education? I mean, I realize they're stretched at the moment. Uh, I also realize that the University of Pretoria does have more resources than many other institutions across the country. You know, I, I must say, uh, I must be very thankful to the cluster investigation team, which includes a local DOH, the NHL as well. We haven't been, not been sleeping well. People have been working over the entire management of University of Pretoria has been working over the entire weekend till now. You know, there's no Easter for us, uh, predominantly due to these sometimes unnoticed super spreader events or some parties that happen and leads to a massive cluster outbreak. Uh, I mean, they're doing a great job, you know, screening. Now we started with screening about 500 people, then we moved to 3,000. And now we're moving to 6,000 students and staff because as, as more and more contacts we are tracking and tracing early, more the numbers starts coming in. More people will start testing, more the people will become positive and more people will be needing to isolate. So it's a lot of work. It's difficult work. It's not easy as it sounds as I'm speaking to you right now. But there's no other choice. We have to do it. If we don't do it, if we do not isolate people early and we do not break the chain of this outbreak, the outbreaks will spread into families, into communities and can be much more lethal and can lead to something which we are trying to, to prevent from. So I think um, these are tough times and, uh, and, and, these, and, and as 6th of April happens tomorrow, we anticipate young people coming back into our institutions. And, it's a, and what we've done is we put our institutions on high alert 
because at this moment we need to watch out these small little pieces of cluster outbreaks on young people before it becomes big waves going forward. Professor Ramnik Alawalia, thanks very much indeed. Really appreciate the time. The CEO of the organization.